Hello, I can see some people are joining. Just checking to see if people can hear me. Perfect. Okay, so we have another minute, so I'm just waiting for uh, some more people to join. Good afternoon. Morning here still, but uh, afternoon I'm assuming where you are. Okay, so we are at uh, 11 o'clock here, so in Cold Lake, um, might be other time, some other time wherever you are, um, but we are going to get started. Um, we don't have all the participants that have registered, so I'm sure that there's going to be some more that are going to come in, um, but the first couple slides, of course, are just going over the admin stuff, so um, we can get started on that, and then if people want to join us, then they can feel free. Otherwise, we have a group regardless, so um, we will get started. Good morning, Ryan. Good afternoon, Rob. All right, so <clears throat> welcome. First off, welcome. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on wherever you happen to be. So before we get started, of course, we do have some amends. So if you've uh, been on previous sessions, you'll see that we say the exact same thing pretty much every time. So if also, if you see me looking at different screens, it's because I have a few different screens on the go. Uh, but the presentation you're about to view is the intellectual property of the Department of National Defense. So any reproduction or retransmission of the slides contained in this presentation is strictly forbidden. Uh, some of the topics discussed in this webinar may be of a sense of nature and not appropriate for children, so we do ask for parental discretion. This being an addiction series, uh, today we are talking about alcohol, so just please keep that in mind if you do have any children around you. Uh, please understand that people's stories are theirs alone to tell, and anything that is shared by participants in this webinar, either on camera or in the chat, is not to be discussed outside of the webinar. That being said, the webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing later on calfconnection.ca. So active participation is definitely encouraged. It helps um, with the adult learning portion. Uh, you may simply follow along without using the chat or video microphone functions if you prefer. So essentially what I normally do with the sessions is I don't turn on the, the uh, mics and, and video for other people um, just so that we can kind of keep control of everyone talking at the same time. However, um, at the, you know, near the end of the session, if, if I open the, if we have time for a lot of questions, um, I can open your mic or your, your camera if you would like to talk that way. Um, <laughs> so I am going to ask where, where people are from in just a moment. Uh, Cappy, I believe, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, but yeah, so we will ask where everyone's from so that we kind of have an idea of where everyone's joining us from. All right, so moving on to our next slide here. So as I mentioned, it is part of the addiction series today. So hopefully uh, you're here for the right session. Otherwise, welcome and I hope you don't leave. Um, so today is part two. So are we talking about rethink the drink? So essentially focusing on alcohol. So if anybody is new and didn't see me um, in the last session or they, they haven't seen me in another session that I've done, um, my name is Lisa uh, Fisher. I am the health promotion specialist here at Four Wing Cold Lake. So before we get started, I do have a couple questions for you. So the first one is, I'd like to know what group you are from. So I'm going to share that poll now, and if I'd like, I just like you to answer that. So if you're a regular reserve force member, a civilian employee, a veteran, or a family member, um, I do understand that you may be, uh, you know, more than one of those, um, but the one that you would kind of identify with most at this time. Okay, so we have most people have answered so far. Um, so majority are a regular reserve force members. So we have quite a bit of military in here. Um, second place, of course, is our civilian employees. And we do have um, a veteran in here as well. Of course, some of our civilian employees may also be veterans too. 
Okay, so here's the question um, that is going to see where we're all from. So I'm not going to do a poll. I'd actually like you to put in the chat where you're joining us from. So what city or province um, are you coming in from? Winnipeg, Alberta, Halifax, Cold Lake, Mattawawa, Victoria, Battleford, Saskatchewan, Petawawa, Pembroke, Petawawa. Petawawa is popular today. <laughs> All right, so we have, um, it seems from all across the country today, so we have um, quite a few different provinces, which is fantastic. Um, nobody seems to be um, coming in from OutCamp uh, today, but that's perfectly fine. Um, so we're gonna move on to uh, the, the actual content of the session. So first I'm going to do a what do you think poll activity. So essentially, um, I want you to kind of start thinking about your attitudes and beliefs when it comes to alcohol. So I'm going to do a few series of polls here. I'll put the question on the screen and then you'll be able to answer on the poll. And then if you wanna add a little bit more about that in the chat, feel free, please feel free, okay? So let's add the first one here. So you're gonna see the first question on the screen is gonna be there, oop, there we go. There's nothing wrong with a few beer or glasses of wine to unwind after a long day. So what you need to answer is either you agree completely you disagree completely, you're in the middle, you're not quite sure, or you just don't have an opinion on it. And please pick I don't have an opinion if you actually don't, and not just as the uh, easy way out there. Okay, so we have most people have responded. Um, so majority are kind of in the middle. Um, neither completely agree or completely disagree. Um, we don't have anybody who disagrees completely. We have a few that agree completely and then a couple that just don't have an opinion on it. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So we're going, unless anybody's chatting here. No, I'm just chatting. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. This is just an exercise to get you thinking before we get into the content, okay? So the next one that you'll see on the screen is that drinking games are not harmful since they're meant to be fun. So yet again, do you agree completely? Oh, sorry, there you go, share it now. Do you agree completely, disagree completely, you're in the middle or you don't have an opinion? Okay. So we seem to be, for the people who have uh, answered so far, we seem to be tied with I disagree completely or you're in the middle. Okay, that's fair. All right, next one. One drink will not affect your driving. So let's answer that one next. Okay, so. We have majority is disagreeing completely. Uh, and then second place we have that in the middle. So not 100% sure on that one. Okay. All right. And last one. There's no harm getting hammered if you only do it occasionally. So hammered, drunk, lack of drunk, whatever word you like to use to describe that. But. Okay, and everyone's answered. So 1% has agreed completely, a majority has disagreed completely, and then a few are in the middle. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing your opinions and beliefs on that one. Um, so I, those are all anonymous, so I don't know who has what uh, belief or attitude on that, um, but hopefully kind of got you in the, the mind frame of what we're about to talk about. So what I wanna ask of you is what is a standard drink? So let's go through them. So a beer, what would be a standard drink of beer? How much? And you can just put that in the chat. A 
pint, six, 12 ounces. Yeah. Okay. Eight ounces, pint. Okay. All right. What about uh, wine? What would that look like? Six, five, five. Six, five. Okay. So we're about six or five, depending on the person and what about distilled alcohol so spirit so if you're going to do a shot um, or a mixed drink how much would that be uh Kathy, i can see you typing in the chat um so people are between one and one and a half ounces yeah so uh Kathy, if you're having difficulty just refresh the page and you'll be able to see everything Okay, so let's actually look at, at how you guys did with the guessing on your standard drinks here. So for the guidelines, which is um, from the uh, Canadian Substance Use Addiction, uh, these are the guidelines. So a, a beer would be 12 ounces of about 5% alcohol content. Uh, cider cooler is the same at 12 ounces um, with about a 5% alcohol content. Wine is 12% uh, percent alcohol content for five ounces, which um, a lot of people generally pour, I think, more with wine. Um, and distilled alcohol, so if you were using any type of spirit, um, if you're either taking a shot or, or doing a mixed drink, then it would be uh, one and a half ounces of 40% alcohol content. Now, when we look at what a standard drink equals to in Canada, it's essentially 13.6 grams of alcohol. We do need to keep in mind that if you're a person who's making homemade beer or wine, that alcohol content is going to change. Um, so these are the guidelines based on those alcohol contents. If you're purchasing or making an uh, alcohol that is of a different alcohol content, then you need to also realize that it may be less than a standard drink or more than a standard drink. <laughs> right, pint is 16 ounces. So it's actually, so pint would be more than one standard drink for sure. Um, which I mean, if that's something that you're choosing to drink, you just need to be aware that it is more of a more than one standard drink. I do want to kind of give you a bit of an idea of what uh, calculating standard drinks looks like. So if you go on, um, like for example, Educa El Cool, I can't kind of speak French. So uh, that is the um, essentially the, the addictions information to alcohol for um, Quebec. Um, you can actually use their uh, calculator to see you know, how, how much a, a drink is. Okay, Kathy, hopefully you come back. Um, so if you're calculating standard drinks, if you're looking at light beer, so if you're choosing to drink a light beer, um, that's about 4%. So if you're doing a 473 milliliter can of that, that's gonna be 1.1 standard drink, for example. Um, if you're choosing a Rattler, so I've had people ask me about Rattlers before, that's essentially a really, really light beer, so a 2.5%. Same, type, same uh, size can, a 472 milliliter can, that's 0.69 standard drink. So it's, you're actually a little less than, a, than one standard drink. Um, if you're looking at, some, a lot of times people ask me, okay, what's, how many standard drinks are then in a bottle of wine? I do not recommend you drink a bottle of wine at one time. However, people do ask that. Um, so if you're looking at a 750 milliliter bottle of wine, which is the general size, and it's a 12% alcohol content, that's actually 5.2, almost 5.3 standard drinks in that in that bottle. So um, people have said, oh, it's five drinks. I said, well, almost, <laughs> but it's actually a little bit more. Um, if you're looking at something that's fortified, so a port or a sherry, those are higher in content. Um, so they'd be about almost two standard drinks for 20% alcohol content for those. Just kind of give you an idea. Um, you most of your your spirits and stuff are going to be around the 40% alcohol content, but of course, if you're doing something that's very very high, uh, so for example, absinthe uh, is 70% alcohol content around, like the, one of the higher ones. Um, if you were doing a 1.5 ounce of absinthe, that's actually almost two standard drinks in just that. So you really really need to keep that alcohol content in mind. Okay, so let's, uh, I wanna, wanna see if it works, if you uh, can kind of guess this part as well. So Canada's lowers drinking guidelines. Let's look for women. So how many drinks per day can a woman have? Oh, perfect, it's working for you again, that's great. Two. I 
Everyone seems to be on the two bandwagon. Okay, perfect. Uh, what about per week? Seven? Five, eight, ten, five. <laughs> A little all over the place with that. Okay. So let's look at for women, okay? So for women, you're zero to two. So remember, we start at zero because you don't have to drink alcohol every day, right? You can choose to not drink alcohol at all. So zero to two. Um, and then no more than 10 per week. On special occasions, so you'll see that... Um, there's a little thing saying special occasions there where it says no more than three. So on special occasions, you can consume up to three if you're if you're a woman. Um, remember, a special occasion is not every day, right? Um, it's you know your birthday, uh, Christmas. If you want to drink up to three, sure. Um, it's not okay. Well, every Saturday is a special occasion. Not quite. Okay. Um, you also um, can't save up. So for which I'll mention a bit more when we look at the men's, but we'll look at uh, what we think for the men. So zero to two per day for women. How many for men? Sorry about that. I had an issue on my end. I couldn't find my screen. Okay, um, so I will mention, I just noticed that uh, for some reason my PowerPoint put the same table uh, for men than for women, which is incorrect. Um, so you'll see that come out. That is incorrect, okay? Um, so for men, it's uh, three, so zero to three. Um, for per week, it's gonna be no more than 15. Uh, and then the special occasions, again, no more than four. So yeah, so men can tolerate more. So we're going to get into that a little bit, a little bit later. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, per week you don't want to be saving up. So um, people are saying, oh well, I get, let's say for for me, I'm I'm a woman. Um, oh, I get 10, 10 per week. That means on Saturday I get to have ten because I was good and I didn't drink all week. That's not how that works. Um, you can have no more than ten over the span of the week, but Saturday is still a day of the week, so therefore I can have a max of two. It happens to be my birthday on Saturday, then I can choose to have up to three. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you don't just get a free for all pass just because you didn't drink alcohol during the week and you, you saved up. That's not how that works, unfortunately, for people who believe in that. Okay. I will mention, of course, there are times when there's going to be a zero with limit. So um, for, for those who are pregnant or, or uh, looking to become pregnant, um, and that would be a zero limit as well. Um, and for people who are breastfeeding, then you want to make sure that you have time um, before you, you know, you do go and breastfeed. So second question here, uh, how do you define binge drinking? So how many drinks would be binge drinking? I will answer copy quickly. So you've asked, uh, what does a special occasion have anything to do with the number allowed? It's still a day. So essentially, um, it's they've kind of shown that if you every once in a while go up to that extra drink, there's no harmful effects. Um, so it kind of just gives some leniency um, for people who want to celebrate with alcohol um, on special occasions. Um, that's essentially it. It's not it. It's not that it just gives them like a free for all if they choose, you know, Wine Wednesday is a special occasion every week. That's not what it's meant for. It's meant for, you know, a few times um, in the course of, you know, a year. It may be a special occasion. You may want to have an extra beverage and that would be okay. It would not increase your harm. Okay, so people are for binge drinking saying five or more, uh, past the limit when you stop being aware of what you're doing, drinking more than recommended amount, short amount of time over indulging in alcohol, four to five. Yeah, 
one after the other. Yeah, so um, when you look at the amount, it's going to be between five or more drinks in one occasion for men or four or more drinks in one occasion for women. So essentially it goes above that special occasion limit, okay? Um, one occasion, people have asked, okay, well, if I spread out the drinks over a 24-hour period, is that okay? First off, you should be sleeping for between seven to nine hours of the, that 24-hour period. Secondly, it's still one occasion. It's still one day, okay? Um, of course, if you're drinking uh, drinks back to back to back to back, that's going to um, increase your toxicity over a quicker period of time than if you're, you were technically spreading them out over an entire period of day, okay? Um, I'd say quite a few people probably binge drink and don't even realize they're doing it um, because they are not experienced blackout or anything like that. So they're saying, well, I'm still I'm still in, you know, able to think, so therefore I'm not binge drinking. But binge drinking is really about the amount you're consuming, not necessarily all the effects that may be, you may be feeling psychologically or mentally. <clears throat> so really important to remember um, to measure your drinks. <laughs> So the reason I have this here is because people say, well, I only had one drink. Well, did you measure your standard drink? Because most people don't, um, especially I would say um, younger people definitely don't. Um, even when we go and do uh, mocktails at, at uh, functions, we bring our standard measuring cup um, and people are like, why would I use that? I'm like, because I don't think you know probably how much you're drinking. He's like, oh, well, that just means I have to follow that line. And if I don't have that, then I don't have to follow it. I'm like, that's not how that works. Um, some other people, though, they, they get really excited about the measuring cups because they go, oh, I didn't know how to actually measure it. I didn't want to, like, grab my glass measuring cup to measure my drink. Um, so having something like that where it's just very easy for them, um, they really enjoy that. So make sure you're measuring. Um, if you're, you do per own wine glasses that are really, really large, then you do want to make sure you know what five ounces looks like in there. Um, if you're choosing to fill it more than five ounces, you just need to be aware that you're drinking more than one standard drink. So if you're filling it 10 ounces or nine ounces for a female, you're up to your two, right? Um, so just kind of keep that it. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is not a standard wine glass at all. <laughs> and this is not five ounces. I grabbed this one because it reminds me of uh, when Costco brought out their massive wine glasses that stand up like four feet tall. Yeah. So alcohol in the body. So just to kind of explain how alcohol get process, gets processed in the body. So when you consume alcohol, it is absorbed very rapidly into your bloodstream. So within about uh, 30 minutes of consumption, it's actually found in all the tissues and organs and secretions in your body. So it travels quite rapidly. Um, it does go to, of course, your liver and to your brain. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And then alcohol is eliminated at that fixed rate. So any rem any portion of the alcohol that is not metabolized through your bloodstream does leave the body through sweat, urine, um, and saliva. The stuff that is, of course, is going to travel to those different areas. So that's why you're going to feel the effects, of course, um, both physically and mentally when you consume alcohol. Um, the liver does produce enzymes that break down the alcohol molecules, so that's essentially how it is metabolized and leaves the body eventually. Um, however, it is eliminated at a fixed rate. So it can take up to two hours per standard drink. So remember way back at the beginning when I said one drink won't affect your driving? I'd say most people did disagree with that, which is great, because I think you hear that often and say, well, I've only had one drink so I can drive. We have to remember that we have different tolerances and because of our body differences, but also is it actually eliminated from our body by the time we choose to get behind the wheel? Um, with the new you know, um, laws around being stopped and breathalyzers and everything, sure, you may not be at um, you know, the driving impaired limit, um, but you could potentially still um, not pass the breathalyzer and, and get you know, your, your license suspended for a day or, or what have you. So you have to, depending on whatever province you're in, so you have to be really careful about that. Um, and, you know, not just the law, but also are you actually capable of driving or operating machine or anything with just one drink? You may not be. Just because your friend is doesn't mean you are. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so what are some factors that influence the rates of intoxication? Just put, put it in the chat box about what could influence the rate of intoxication. So how fast do you feel intoxicated? Wait, 
haven't eaten, hydrate or hungry, sex, age, weight, fitness level, drugs, food, medication, allergies, okay. Not had a drink in a long time, gender, if you have a cold, yeah. So you guys are getting some really, really good options here. Um, here's kind of the, the ones that we focus on, but there's quite a few more as well. Uh, so speed of consumption. So remember when I said um, it's going to be a bit different if you're sipping on your alcohol versus if you're gulping down shots or gulping down drinks. Um, the more alcohol, of course, that you consume in a shorter period of time, the higher blood alcohol content over that shorter period of time. So we want to try to sip our drinks versus, you know, downing shots. Uh, if you have an empty or full stomach, is going to play an effect. So having food in your stomach before drinking can slow your body's uh, absorption of alcohol, which means it's going to be take take a little longer to uh, to feel intoxicated. Um, size and body build. So larger people do absorb alcohol uh, more slowly than smaller people, so um, they're not going to feel as intoxicated as quick as a smaller person. When percentage of body fat does increase, the resulting concentration of alcohol in the lean tissues of the body is proportionally higher. So um, if you have a higher body fat content, then you're gonna feel intoxicated a little bit more than somebody who has a leaner body mass. Uh, biological sex, so if uh, male or female does react differently. So um, with women, women do tend to be smaller than men. Uh, they do tend to have a higher body fat percentage and have fewer of the enzymes um, used to metabolize alcohol than males. So when you look at that, they're more likely to um, be intoxicated quicker than a male if they were drinking the exact same amount the exact same time period. Age as well. So um, as we age, um, we do feel the effects of alcohol more prominently than if you were younger. So some of you, as you age, you may feel that, uh, you know, you do, it does take less alcohol to make you feel a bit, uh, you know, buzzed or intoxicated. Um, you may have hangovers more often than you did when you were younger. Um, Essentially, muscle mass is, is generally replaced by some fat as we age. So, of course, as we increase our body fat percentage, we have those intoxicating effects a little bit more. Um, amount of water does decrease in age as well, so that can contribute to our higher BAC. Um, and the, the older you are, the longer the alcohol does stay in the liver before it moves uh, to the bloodstream where it's metabolized. So, of course, that's going to take a little longer as well. Other substance use. So this could be, um, you know, another drug, whether that be illicit or a prescription or over-the-counter drug, um, or if you're drinking caffeine or consuming caffeine in another way, um, they can increase the risk of potentially dangerous alcohol drug combinations, so we do need to be aware of, of that. Uh, setting or circumstance, so our mood can impact um, the way that we consume alcohol, the way that our body is processing it, as well as how we're reacting to it, as well as the setting. So stress emotions um, can actually change the enzymes in our stomach. So it actually affects how our stomach processes alcohol and goes into the bloodstream and everything. Um, and psychological and social effects of alcohol can be actually magnified by that ex expectation. So if we're drinking alcohol, expecting for us to feel better, it can actually impact the way that we're feeling with that alcohol. Other options, of course, is the strength of the drink. So if you have a stronger drink, intoxication is going to be higher um, and if you have health concerns so if whether you're you know sick with a common cold for some people I'd mentioned or if you know you have a chronic health condition those types of things can also affect your your intoxication levels so alcohol and caffeine um, it's important to remember that they shouldn't be mixed <laughs> but a lot of people do so it can increase the risk of harm from alcohol uh, Oftentimes when we consume caffeine uh, with alcohol, we feel more alert and more uh, refreshed and everything. So we, we actually increase our consumption of alcohol. So um, I'll give you an example with Nova Scotia um, in university world lifetime. Um, essentially the way that my friends would do it, do it when back when university is you pre-drank before you go, went out to the bar. And so you pre-drank starting around mm, six, seven at night, depending on, on what was going on but you didn't get to the bar till 12. And depending on which bar you went to, some were open till four in the morning. So um, if you're consuming caffeine to stay awake, to stay till closing, you are keeping your, you know, that 6 p.m., let's say, to four in the morning to be consuming alcohol. That's a really long time. And 
definitely weren't, you know, consuming just two drinks over that period of time. You were drinking quite a bit. So keeping awake increases the alcohol consumption potentially. Um, generally, when you consume out caffeine with it, you're going to report feeling less intoxicated than you actually are. Uh, and it does increase risk of alcohol poisoning um, as well as dehydration and alcohol related injury or death. So in Canada, alcoholic drinks that are directly add, that have directly added caffeine are illegal. Um, so you'll see if you go to the bar and ask for, um, you know, a Jagerbaum, you get the, um, the shot and you get the energy drink separately. And that's kind of how they get around that. Um, but of course, they're giving you this, the special shot glass that you're going to pour the energy drink in. Um, but that is essentially how they get around that, 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 that law. Um, caffeine may be present in some alcoholic beverages if it's a result of flavoring ingredients that naturally contain caffeine. So if you look um, at certain alcoholic beverages that are available in the liquor store that are an energy drink type caffeine drink, um, it's because it's a natural uh, flavoring. So a guarana extract or a coffee, that's how they kind of are able to, to slip the caffeine in there. So risky drinking, what can risky drinking lead to? Um, so first is risky behavior. Um, so when we're intoxicated, our um, you know, inhibitions are kind of lowered, we're, we're more likely to be impulsive, so we're more likely to engage in risky type behavior. Uh, as I mentioned, impulsivity, more likely to kind of just make decisions on the whim, not really think them through, so maybe not make important decisions during this time. Uh, we're prone to violence. So um, it has actually been shown that in Canada, um, alcohol and other drug use is very common in homicides in Canada. Um, so in 2014, they found that there was an estimated 40% of the accused and 32% of the victims involved in a homicide in Canada had, alcohol, had used alcohol at the time of the crime. So you can see that alcohol does, of course, increase um, that violent tendency potentially for some people. Uh, so we do need to be aware of that. Um, as well as, of course, impaired driving uh, is the leading cause of criminal death in Canada. Um, so that's definitely concerning as well. Uh, injury, we're more likely to, of course, without impulsivity, that violence, uh, more likely to do things that we might get injured doing. Um, also, you know, our balance is off, so we could, you know, fall more easily. We could walk into walls more easily, right? So there's just very basic things that could cause injury to us. Uh, poor memory. Depending, of course, how much you're drinking, uh, you may end up becoming to the point of blackout drunk. So therefore, you're not going to remember um, a lot of your night. Impaired decision making. So as I said, uh, don't make decisions while drinking alcohol because uh, you're probably not making the best decisions. Lack of coordination. So you'll see that uh, people have difficulty, you know, if they drop money, they're not going to be able to pick it up very well. Uh, opening doors might be very really difficult. Uh, walking up and down stairs might be super difficult. <clears throat> um, poor academic and occupational performance, so it does affect our academic uh, or occupational performance, um, whether we're drinking during that time or whether we're drinking, um, you know, and being hung over and then coming in and trying to, to perform. And then impaired social functioning, so it can affect, of course, how we, uh, you know, function with other people. Um, you know, you, it may decrease your inhibition, so you may be more socially active with people when, when drinking. Um, but it also could mean that you're more hostile toward people when you're drinking as well, and that could really impact your, your, uh, your friendships and your relationships. So drinking alcohol, what is it linked to? So it is linked to uh, quite a few um, negative things. <laughs> so alcohol use and other drug disorders, of course, um, if you are consuming alcohol regularly, you could become dependent on, a, on alcohol. Um, so we do need to keep this in mind. Um, brain damage. So chronic alcohol misuse may cause permanent brain damages in your brain, which often lead to impaired brain function. Um, it could increase uh, risk of dementia and, and cause brain shrinkage, shrinkage in middle-aged or, or, or older adults. Um, liver disease. So I think that's where a lot of people kind of go to when they think of uh, um, people who are dependent on alcohol. They kind of think of liver disease. Um, so a fatty liver is, is characterized by increased fatty cells. Um, so it does gradually develop in, in about 90% of those who drink more than a half ounce of alcohol per day. Studies have shown that, um, of course, over a period of time. Um, and heavy drinkers, binge drinking may cause the, uh, the liver to become inflamed. And if that happens over time, you could develop cirrhosis. 
various cancers as well. So alcohol is considered a carcinogenic, so essentially it is something that could cause cancer, um, and it is strongly associated with certain types of cancer. The cells lining your mouth and throat um, can easily be penetrated by alcohol. So when you look at any of the mouth and throat cancers, your risks are very high in those areas. Um, so for example, your uh, laryngeal cancer and your uh, it can be increased by about 2.5, two and a half times, as well as your um, esophageal cancer can be increased by five times. Uh, when you look at uh, even light alcohol consumption can actually increase your mouth and throat cancer risk by 20%. So really, really sensitive cells in the mouth and throat that are really, really um, susceptible to the harmful effects of alcohol. Pancreatitis can also happen. Uh, mental health disorders. So oftentimes um, people who struggle with mental health can actually um, lean on alcohol to make themselves feel better. Um, however, it generally can make it way worse um, than, than better, right? So for example, if somebody has anxiety, they may make it may take alcohol so they feel less anxious. And in the short term, that could definitely work. In the long term, it may actually uh, impact them uh, in a negative way. Um, it is strongly linked with depression. So rates of alcohol use are much higher in people who uh, have depression. Um, and heavy drinking per occasion is linked to increased risk of major depression, especially in women. So women are definitely susceptible to that. Um, Alcohol is also sometimes used to cope uh, with those who have PTSD symptoms. Um, however, drinking is associated with the onset of PTSD. So essentially, um, when you're struggling with those PTSD symptoms, it's more likely to be consuming alcohol and alcohol can increase the severity of those symptoms. Um, it's also that uh, it does increase risks of suicide because you're going to have um, more of a tendency of suicidal suicidality, so suicidal thoughts, as well as, of course, the impulsivity, okay? So that's the next part here. Stomach ulcers from drinking the alcohol. Uh, cardiovascular disease, so heavy drinking has been uh, linked to increased mortality, coronary heart disease, peripheral artery disease, heart failure, stroke, hypertension, and a normal amount of cholesterol or fat in blood. Um, so if you're going above four drinks per day, that risk does uh, increase quite a bit, okay? Diabetes as well, uh, sexually transmitted infections mostly come from the impulsivity and the risk of behavior. So um, if you are uh, drinking alcohol, less likely to be really thinking through your decision. So you may choose to engage in sexual activity without adequate protection, um, which could potentially lead to a sexually transmitted disease infection. Uh, and then fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. So if anybody is uh, pregnant and then consuming alcohol at that time, uh, there is a potential for FASD to occur. I do mention here as well, some, a lot of times people ask me, well, what about health benefits of alcohol? And yes, there has been shown some health benefits, but there still needs to be a lot of research done. Um, they don't, it's not recommended to start drinking alcohol for the health benefits because the harmful effects um, are way more pronounced than the health benefits. Um, and for people who say, you know, okay, well, I drink red wine for my health benefits, realistically, um, you can get those, uh, you know, those antioxidants from grapes, or from uh, grape juice or from blueberries. So you don't need to consume alcohol for those health benefits. Um, as well, a lot of people say, you know, um, those who consume, there's been studies that have shown those consume specifically red wine, um, have less risk for heart disease, but they haven't been able to completely say it's a cause and effect relationship because they, they're not sure if those people who are also consuming the red wine are also just overall healthier. So they are more physically active. They have a healthier life di diet. They have a healthier lifestyle. Um, so be cognizant of that, um, that yes, there could be health benefits, but don't drink alcohol to get those health benefits. Okay. Uh, so abstinence. Um, so people may choose not to drink at all. Um, and that can be for a variety of different reasons. So what are some reasons why people may choose to abstain? Just type it in the chat box there. Okay. Afraid of the effect, health, if you're poor, yeah. Previous addictions or family with addiction, medication conflicts, religion, Mm hmm. Yeah, so you you kind of nailed it on the head there. Genetic alcoholism, bad experiences. 
Yeah. So personal choice, we can all just choose not to drink alcohol if we want to. Um, you, we don't actually have to have another reason. We can just say, I don't want to, right? Um, I feel like most people don't say that. I, I see a lot of people that lean on another reason because people don't are, are kind of nervous that somebody else may not accept their reason as I just don't want to. Um, and that's where we really need to stand up for ourselves and say, you may not agree with it, but I'm not interested, right? Health, of course, um, if we're concerned about our health or if we currently have a health condition that we believe alcohol may exacerbate it, then we would be um, abstaining. Past alcohol and or drug problems in the self or family. So last session I talked about um, that mental health continuum. And if you're in the red, uh, the, really to get back to that green zone, you're likely going to have to abstain. It's very, very unlikely that you would be able to get back to the green um, if, you, if you're not abstaining. Um, and then, of course, religious beliefs. So for some religions or some um, spiritualities, they don't consume alcohol as well. So we want to make sure that we're not drinking during these circum circumstances. So when we're operating a vehicle, tool, or machinery, um, so that most people think of the vehicle. Some people think, oh, okay, heavy machinery, any tool. Don't do carpentry. Don't mow your lawn. Um, don't do any of those things when you have consumed alcohol. Okay. Um, I also would really caution against cooking when you're drinking alcohol because you are, um, you know, near hot things. You're near a burner, you're near a flame. Not a good idea. Uh, using medications or other drugs that interact with alcohol. It's very important that you understand those interactions. Ask your doctor, ask your pharmacist, read the back of the label, uh, read the inserts that come with your prescription medications. It's really important because um, you may be missing something. Also, don't, for prescription medications, I have seen this before, um, where sometimes the pharmacist doesn't tell you all of the interactions, okay? Um, so don't rely on the pharmacist to tell you the interactions or for there to be a little warning label on your bottle because it's going to be different depending on provinces. So read the insert, even Google your, your prescription if you're really unsure because you're like, oh, it doesn't say it, but I just wanna make sure. Google it because there is like the Rx um, option to read all about your prescription uh, and then you can see if it actually interacts or not okay um, I really really caution against that because it can really uh, impact you negatively if you're drinking alcohol while taking certain medications uh, engaging in sports or other dangerous physical activities so we know that alcohol is consumed in so many sporting events um, it is not safe to do so because uh, that's just increasing your risk even more because drinking alcohol by itself increases your risk of injury uh, working, of course, you as military members or civilian employees, you have uh, policies that you should not be drinking while, while at work. Um, so we want to make sure that, of course, you're not doing that. You're putting yourself at risk. You're putting others at risk. Um, so just avoid that. Making important decisions. So don't go uh, decide to, you know, buy a house, get married, end a relationship, any of those things while drinking alcohol. Do those things when you have a clear mind. Um, when you're pregnant or planning to become pregnant uh, before breastfeeding. While responsible for the care or supervision of others, so that could include your children, other people's children, uh, you know, uh, your elderly parents, potentially, if you're taking care of them, um, and if suffering from a serious physical or mental illness or alcohol dependence. So if you're suffering from a mental health condition, um, definitely be talking to your, your practitioner about that, um, about your consumption of alcohol, because they will want to know about that. Um, and they will have those those guidelines as to if you can consume alcohol and if so, how much you could consume, okay? So if you do choose to drink, these are kind of the, the guiding principles for here. So follow Canada's low risk drinking guidelines. Um, so remember what that is for you based on if you're, uh, you're a man or a woman. Um, keep in mind that uh, this is for somebody who is of legal drinking age, um, of course, those who are not of legal drinking age uh, should not be consuming alcohol at all, but if they are, then they would want to make sure that they are um, not consuming too much either. Um, so if you do have children, have conversations about, uh, about alcohol with them, have open and honest conversations with them, um, just so that they're kind of aware about uh, the harms of alcohol um, and why they may or may not want to choose to, to consume it. Uh, have something to eat, so make sure that you're not drinking on an empty stomach. Um, yes, we're all about, um, you know, 
healthy food and we want to make sure that's a healthy food, but maybe make it a bit more than just a, a side garden salad, right? We want something that's actually a bit more filling and that'll help with that absorption. Alternate with non-alcoholic beverages. So pace yourself throughout the night, but also make sure that you have a non-alcoholic beverage with you at all times. So for example, what I do, um, I when I do drink alcohol, um, I always have water with with me myself. So I have what my alcoholic beverage and I have a glass of water. Um, and before I'm allowed to go and have my second beverage, if I choose to do so, um, I do need to make sure that I've I've drank my full glass of water. And it's a, it's this glass of water. <laughs> so it's not a, uh, a 250 ml, it's a full glass this size um, that I have to consume before I go and drink another beverage. Um, just to make sure that I'm, I'm pacing myself, that I'm consuming a non-alcoholic beverage, that I'm staying hydrated. Um, don't mix alcohol with other drugs and or medications, especially if there's interactions. Um, even if there's not interactions, it might be just a better idea to just avoid it anyway. Um, some people uh, that you're with may not understand that so much. Um, I have had people that are saying, oh, are you drinking tonight? I said, no, I'm not taking medication for a certain reason, or I've taken my allergy pill. They're like, oh, it's fine. I'm like, no, I've taken my allergy pill, so sorry, it's not happening. I can have fun just like I am. Um, plan ahead, so have transportation options. So that might be different depending on wherever you are. Um, you may have the option of public transportation, so a bus. Um, you may have cabs, uh, you could have, you know, a designated driver. Of course, make sure if you're the designated driver, stay the designated driver. Please don't consume alcohol if people are relying on you. Um, that's not really fair to, to other people. Um, if you are a person that do not does not do well being the designated driver because you don't have as much fun and you want to consume alcohol, then don't say you're going to be the designated driver, okay? Um, support others' decisions about limiting drinks or not drinking at all. So as I mentioned a couple of times, I have had people that say, oh, why aren't you drinking? Or, or hey, just have another drink. Or, um, you know, I can't believe you don't drink as much as we do. It's my decision. So I, I always explain to them, you know, it's not harming you and it's not affecting you as to how much I drink. So I'm always making sure that I'm very supportive of other people about how much they drink or not. Um, you know, if they're drinking to excess, of course, I'm going to have a potential conversation with them and say, um, you know, have you have you kind of looked at Candace Over's drinking guidelines or have you um, thought about maybe drinking a little less, um, depending, of course, who I'm talking to um, and how that conversation would go. But make sure you're really supporting people in your life about their decisions around alcohol so that they feel like they're more open and honest with you. Um, and Kathy kind of mentioned about bad experience being brought up and that. So as I going back, like, I do really feel strongly about um, we need to have open and honest conversations about alcohol with everybody, including um, including children when they're of an age to have those discussions, only because if you hide it, um, you could potentially have have issues kind of down the road. Um, so we want to make sure that we're just having conversations. It's a it's a very normal thing in our society. Um, whether we agree with it or not. So hiding it is not going to really help us any, um, but being able to have just an open conversation about it. Same with we need to have open conversations about mental health, right? Um, just being able to be able to go up to somebody and say, you know, I think I might be drinking too much and not feel like you're going to be shunned, right? Um, so that is, that is incredibly important. Okay, so my last slide here is actually just talking about the addictions awareness series, the next parts of it. So um, I do, I will open this time up for questions around alcohol, um, just so that if you do have anything that I haven't covered, I can potentially answer those. Um, I will point out that our addictions awareness series continues for the next few weeks here, uh, well, next month or so. So uh, next week will be the uh, seeing through the weeds of cannabis in your health. So I will grab that uh, demo link for you for registration if you're interested. Um, but does anybody have any questions at all? And if you do want me to open up your mic, just say, uh, just ask in the chat and I can open that up. And again, I'll just put that resources slide on that we put on every time, um, just to give you the resources that are available. I will actually also, um, going to add a handout here, which is the low risk drinking guidelines. So you can have your very own copy um, so that you don't forget about it. 
So that is there for you. And that is the registration link for the next session if you are interested. So you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us today, um, or for me, joining me, I guess. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining. It was great to have you guys again. Um, and if you were new to the, the addiction series, thanks for joining for the first session. Um, and hopefully we'll see you all again next week if it's something of interest to you. Uh, so if life gets back to normal, normal, all these will be available elsewhere. So do you mean that the recordings or do you think the, the asking about live webinars, Kathy? Live webinars. So I'm not entirely sure how that's going to keep going um, when life kind of goes back to normal and we're all at our offices. I, we haven't gotten much guidance on that yet. Um, once we know, we will, of course, um, be sharing all that information with you, whether that's going to be something that we continue or not. Um, I will say that the recordings there, um, if you go to, so if you go to our CAF Connection website, we do have them listed for the recordings. Um, if you wait a little longer, there are, they are putting up together, uh, you know, a channel that all those recordings will be on. But yeah, as for live webinars continuing past um, the work from home period, I'm not 100% sure as to how that would work. Okay, so as I don't think that there are any uh, other questions going on, I've just put our Four Wing Health Promotion Gmail in there. So if you do have a question and you do want to send one off to us, feel free. Um, otherwise, uh, we will see you next week. Um, and thank you for joining and have a great rest of your day.